Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we have Jason Forrest with us. Jason, welcome. And uh, we are talking about the IPA SurfTech Fusion HD Wrecking Ball. So Duke IPA shape on this board, uh, the wrecking ball design and the construction is EPS Epoxy SurfTech Fusion HD. For more information on the Fusion HD uh, build technology, check out the video that's gonna be right below this one. It might be above it, below it. And uh, check that out. Uh, Jake Sachs and I go into in-depth, super tech detail on the construction, both this one and the EPS Epoxy dual core from SurfTech. But right now with Jason, we wanna talk about the performance of the wrecking ball uh, paired up with some insane G10 fins uh, from NVS. So Jason, let's get into uh, let's get into the stats first. Let's knock off some of these easy things like boom, boom, boom. Let's talk about uh, your dimensions yep. and the board's dimensions. Yeah, so I think I'm 5'8 is my height. I weigh anywhere from 155 to 160. This board's a 5'4, 29.84 liters. It's a little on the higher end of what I typically ride, like okay. 27.5, maybe 28, and then sometimes in the winter I'll ride 29. So it's, it's a little bit on the higher end of the volume range for me. Okay, and yeah, so this is the one that IPA and SurfTech sent us. It was the yep. smallest one that we can get for yep. you. Tell us about the performance of, of this board, like kind of the, let's talk about the range of waves that you surfed it in first. Yeah, I mean, I've only surfed this board a couple times, so I don't have a lot of experience. We've kind of had a bit of a lull here, but I've ridden it a couple of days when it was really small, like knee to thigh high and just kind of running. Um, and then I rode it just most recently yesterday in, you know, shoulder high waves, chest high, shoulder high waves. Mm -hmm. Then I did ride it one day in like, you know, maybe head high shore break waves. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess you could say I've ridden in a few different things. That um, sounds more like a couple, right? Like normal yeah. a couple is like, like a couple, like a married couple. It's like two yeah, people. Two, so maybe three or four. I would say like, that's more like a few to several. Right. A few to right? several. A few to several. So I've All had right. some fun on it though. It's been, it's been good. Um, it's probably that my main takeaway would be that the board's just a little bit too big for me to get the performance out of it that the board's capable of. Okay. But I have ridden it. I've, I've felt the speed down the line. You know, it, it does pump quickly down the line. It gets around sections. Um, it really turns well off the tail. You know, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with these wings and stuff, but it seems to work. And uh, when you get on the tail and whack that turn, it does it does turn really well. And uh, I had fun on it. The shore break session, it was pretty rad. It seemed to get in early and pull in and tube ride okay. Right. Um, yeah, I've had a ton of fun on it. Awesome. Well, that's a good uh, segue for talking Sting design Sting. theory, right? Yeah, so uh, Duke's dad, Ben, uh, legendary Ben Ipa came up with the Sting design, um, you know, a long time ago in the in the 70s. What he's trying to do is like, you know, you know, give you generous volume forward, you know, but also giving, pulling in the tail, right? right? And so the, it's doing a few different things. It's giving you more paddle power, more glide forward, like in the, in the softer mm -hmm. surf or, you know, getting into the wave earlier, like what you were talking right, about. Yeah. Uh, but then if you, if you were to carry this width all the way back, the tail would be totally like, donkey. it would be like out to here, it'd be yeah. gigantic, right? Which for you, it would, you'd be overpowered yeah. out of your mind, like trying to put that fun. tail in the right. water. So part of it is just reducing the tail area. Um, another part of it is giving like a pivot, in, a pivot point right here in the outline of the board. So mm -hmm. it's sort of like, a, if you think of like a much more subtle version of that, it's like a bump wing squash, right, like right. where you just have like a little elbow. Exaggerated this is like, bump. Yeah, this is a mega exaggerated <laughs> bump, right? And then the last thing is to give you bite. So if you look at this thing, if we turn right, it, yeah, if we turn it this way, here. you can actually see that this foils down here as you come, as you come like full thickness and then it foils down here a lot like the tail foils down here. And so that gives you a little bit more bite when mm -hmm. you're putting that in the in the water as well. So those are the different things that are going on with the sting. And, and uh, I mean, Duke's dad, uh, Ben was doing this, you know, with single fins, mm -hmm. um, you know, multi-fin boards. And then now, you know, now uh, in the new stuff, in the modern stuff that they're releasing, um, you know, they have it from a single fin sting, like all the way through like those big, like nine foot to 10 foot right. big brother stings. And it gives, uh, I don't know, it's a cool play on the shape you know, like on the different theories that are going on. And it definitely, I mean, in the boards that I've written of his, it definitely seems to work, you know, and there's other right. people that have followed it um, as well. The other thing that I've seen like jump off the rack, like both in the poly versions of the wrecking ball, and then also the, the Fusion HDs, the EPS epoxies, is the rail shape. Cause it's 100% unique to anything that we've seen. Uh, and we noticed that when we first got those first PU polys uh, into the shop last year, 
Um, but looking at the board, it's got a hard edge from the back, like real sharp, you know, in the back, like which obviously most boards are going to have up to about here. But then it still remains pretty defined, like a defined release point off the board all the way to the nose. So typically up here, like you're getting softer and softer till you literally have nothing. On this board, there is an, an edge, like a, like a tail edge to here, and then it continues to about here like a little bit softer and then there's still even a little bit of something up front all the way to the all the way to the nose that when you put a hard edge on a board like that it gives you more drive so you know you're not only getting your drive off the tail edge and off of the fins but you're also getting the drive off like the entire rail length of the board how, how did that feel as far as like being able to project like when you were surfing yeah, I definitely noticed that on the smaller day when the when I needed to get down the wave fast that it would kind of push off that tail and, and it would feel like you could engage that whole rail and it would give mm -hmm. it that good drive down the line. Yeah. Awesome. So there's there's positives to that and there's negatives to, to that hard edge. Uh, you know, the positive is it gives you a lot of drive. The, the negative, uh, and it also gives you a lot of speed because whenever you have soft, the water wants to wrap around the board and almost like hold onto the board. If you have like a defined edge, the water just flies off the board and there's no, no resistance, there's no grab onto that water. Uh, the negative can be if you do too vertical of a rail and have like an exposed hard edge, that can be as fast as you've ever felt, but it can also be like real grabby and, and real, um, I don't know, real kind of critical to ride. Like you could have your best day ever and then all of a sudden get hit by some small random piece of chop and go further over the nose than you've ever gone in your entire surfing career just by grabbing you. So our guess on these rails is that Duke is tucking them underneath the board to avoid that grabbiness, right? So you look at the board this way and you can see that, that hard edge, but you can see how much it's tucked in from the apex of the rail. The apex of the rail is way out here and then that hard edge is really tucked way under the board. And so the further you tuck it underneath the board, the more forgiving uh, the board's gonna feel and like the less exposed that hard edge, edge is to grabbing. The other thing is it just makes the rails uh, really foil down, like at the apex, it makes them nice and thin. Uh, let's talk a little bit about fins on this board. Um, the fins are the IPA de hook. And these are uh, medium sized de hooks. And there is a reason that they call them the hooks is because they're all the hooked in. Like you can actually see that there's um, quite a bit of shape like this in the fin. There's like almost like convex here and then they're, they're bending out and around. All G10 construction, um, which allows them to make the fins uh, thinner than a standard fin construction. Uh, and thinner is faster, right? Because there's less resistance through the water. Uh, and also they're more durable. They're less li likely to like chip or split or like, you know, basically get worn down, especially with all the short break sessions that you're, That's that you guys are uh, chasing. Tell us what that is for. Uh, well, first off, I really like the NVS fins. I have them in some other boards and I love the construction. I love everything about them. I'd, li I'd like to ride more of them. Um, that fin to me, I did a little research and it seemed like that was really designed for being up high in the face of the wave and holding and being able to generate speed in that like tight critical spot. Okay. And I definitely felt that. I mean, I, I once again, the board really thrives off the tail with that narrow tail and the, and the turning radius and the pivot point. And then I could feel like those fins were fast and, and loose and, you know, kind of bitey on those turns. I enjoyed them. I like those fins. I mean, that makes, I mean, that makes sense if he's trying to make this board go as fast as it can go, like the yep. most speeds available, like at the top of the wave. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, if you're working that top section, you're highlining it yeah, and you you're making a fight in on that little spot. Exactly. Right there, you know? Yeah. So these, these two fins right there can really hold in tight uh, along with that rail. All right. And then, uh, without getting into the super tech of fusion HD EPS epoxy, let's just talk EPS epoxy, right? So how did this board feel uh, compared to a poly, if you could like relate it. It felt good, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it felt good. I feel like, you know, epoxy construction, um, you know, I only rode it in smaller waves. I rode it in some choppy waves, not just glassy waves. Uh -huh. You know, I know we only got clips this one day, but um, it felt good. I, I don't I don't feel a, a weird crossover between epoxy and poly for the most part. All right, awesome. And then who would you recommend, like kind of where in the quiver is this board best for? And who would you recommend it for? Um, if I was going somewhere with like down the line waves that were fast with a big bully open section, I think this board would be really fun for, um, you know, driving around those sections and coming out into the open face and whip, ripping that turn, 
you know, little barrel pockets. Long down the line, fast waves would be the place where I'd take this board. And I mean, it comes in a variety of sizes, so I can't say to a particular body type or size. Right, right. Um, but if you're looking for that type of wave, this would be a great board for that. Awesome. Well, Jason, thanks for spending the time with us. Uh, again, this is the IPA Wrecking Ball in SurfTech Fusion HD EPS Epoxy Construction. If you have any questions on the Wrecking Ball uh, or would like to place an order for one, either Fusion HD or PU Poly, you can always give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.